What is up, everybody? My name is Alex, and today I'm here with my friends at 4MS to talk about the Catalyst Sequencer. So the Catalyst Sequencer is an 8-channel CV and gate sequencer. It has 8 individual outputs that can be freely assigned to be a CV or a gate channel. In addition to a bunch of advanced sequencing features, it has a very unique way of sequencing that they're calling phase-based sequencing. So you can do clock-driven sequencing with an external clock, the reset input, as well as an internal clock, but you can also push through the phase of the sequence with this phase scrub fader or with CV. And so this unique feature makes this sequencer a lot of fun to experiment with and get new sequences that you would have never thought of before. So let's just dive into it. To start the internal clock, we just hit the play button. You can see we're now stepping through the sequence. I'm gonna hit shift and BPM to adjust the clock frequency. So the speed of the sequence. We can also use tap tempo for this or an external clock. So for an external clock, I'm just going to take the clock output of my Metron sequencer, which I've got a little drum beat rolling on and I'm gonna go reset output and sync this so that way one is one on both sequencers. We can mute the drums on the Metron for now and just listen to what we're gonna do with the sequencer. So I'm going to take output number two, I'm gonna plug this into my gate input on the Javelin. You can see I have a very simple subtractive voice set up here with the 258T oscillator running through a WMD carbon filter and Javelin envelope and, on, uh, and VCA. So we're gonna take output one, we're gonna run that into the one volt per octave of the 258T. I do have that molted to the one volt per octave of the carbon, so that way we get some movement with the filter with one volt per octave as well. So the first thing we wanna do is assign our gate channel. So we're gonna select channel two by holding the channel button and using these page buttons to select channel number two. And then we're going to also hold the channel button and you can see we've got quantize and gate sub labels. So we can go use this knob, we've got the knobs correlating to the channels here. We can use this knob and turn that all the way up to green and now we have a gate um, channel. We turn up the knobs here and per step we can see we're getting gates going to the voice now. The brighter the LED, the longer the gate length. And if it turns blue, that means we're actually tying to that next step. So again, we are now sequenced to the Metron, so I'm just gonna add that back in here. So now let's go add some voltages. I'm gonna take channel, and just go to channel one, and now we're going to just turn some of these steps. You can see we have blue LEDs for positive voltage, and then red LED for negative voltage. Right now we're using unquantized voltages. We can use fine to really dial in that step to find the exact voltage we want. This is probably better for parameters, but if you are using unquantized voltages for pitch and you wanna push it off somewhere, that's how you're gonna do that. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to hold channel again. You can see channel one, we're just gonna push this knob over. This is a chromatic scale. This is a major scale. And now this is a minor scale. There's lots of other scales. You can check those out in the manual, but for now we're just gonna stick with the minor scale. Just to keep us rolling, I'm gonna add some hi-hats. And we've got a sequence moving. So that is clock-driven sequencing. As you can see now, I've switched the sync to go to the Acid Rain Maestro here, which is an LFO that can be tempo synced. So right now we're just sending a ramp wave out. And I'm just gonna take that, plug it into the, C the phase CV, and now we're gonna see the sequence just run across. So now we can add the beat, and you can see we're actually even in time. If we change up the shape of our LFO, we're gonna change the direction and the speed of the sequence. So I'm gonna go through here, and I'm just gonna say, let's go down instead of ramp wave up. Go back. Now we can go up and down. This is gonna double the speed, but go up and down, or forward and backwards. So now let's go back to this ramp wave. So what I find really fun with this is to mix the two. So we're gonna go back, we're going to sync the Catalyst Sequencer, press play, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take CV out of the Volterra. I'm gonna make sure we clear this for now so we just hear the exact same sequence that, we, that we've written. 
So we can push the phase of the sequence off with the phase scrub, right? So we can just move around. And you'll hear that I can actually find places that are off of the grid and make it lag a little bit. So we can also do this with CV. And so as you saw with the LFO, when we have something linear going up, we're going to be pushing through each one of those and so each one of the steps. And so now when we push this, you can hear that we're triggering gates every time that moves. So if we use something that has stepped voltage like a sequencer, we can actually push this on and off the grid and move around our phase. So right now I'm just gonna listen to it. I'm adjusting the CV. You'll hear it change. But we're gonna find something that sounds pretty good and still on the grid just like that. So now when I let go, we're going to put this guy on zero volts. Now we can hear that we're changing halfway through. So now on beat four, I'm just gonna push this off the grid a little bit too. So let's find one that sounds a little off the grid. Let's go a little slower. There we go. Now you can see these are where my voltages are changing. So we've got start at the beginning, move phase, and then go off the grid. So I'm going to take out phase CV for a little bit and we're going to talk a little bit more about the advanced features of the catalyst sequencer. So the first thing we can do is we can change the direction of the sequence just by hitting shift and hitting and changing direction here. Now you can see we're going backwards, go forward and backwards. And we got some other ways of driving that or going through that sequence. Go back to forwards. We can also transpose the whole sequence. We can move the start line, the start point. And so when we're moving the start point, what we're doing is actually we're moving the whole sequence over. So we're saying we're going to start right now on step four, and then we're actually going into page two. And that's why we're not hearing anything for a little bit, because we don't have any gates or voltages written on page two. We've just been doing an eight step pattern. So speaking of that, let's go back to the length, or let's go back to start point, go back to one. And now let's adjust the length of the sequence. We're just gonna go shift plus length and go all the way up. You can see this is our last step. We're gonna go all the way up to two pages of eight steps. Now you can see we're going back between the two. So if we wanna focus on one, we just click on that page. And now we can go change up the gates. And now we can change up the voltages. If we click that again, we're going to just look at the pages that are currently playing. We can do all of these things that I've just been talking about per page or per channel as well, just by holding shift and channel. And then if we change the direction, the length, the start point, the transpose, all that's going to happen per channel. But if you just hold shift and adjust those, it's going to adjust it for the entire sequence. Let's go over to gates and let's add, add some funky stuff to the gates. So we're gonna go to channel two, then we're going to check out page one. And I actually just wanna make this an eight step pattern again, just so we can really hear everything we're doing. So we can actually push these gates off of the grid by holding fine. Make sure we're on that gate channel. Go here, we can push these off. And create our own swing. Now we have kind of a unique swing that we created on our own per step. We can also add ratchets just by holding glide, which is also ratchet. And we can go two triggers per step, three or four. So let's go back to our voltage channel now. We can add some glides per step. So I'm gonna add a glide to this one. We just hold glide, turn that up. And the further we turn it up, the longer that glide's gonna take to get to that note. We also have probability. So let's go over to that gate channel and we'll turn down some of these gates to where they're all the way off. 
now what we'll do is we'll hit shift, turn up our random amount. This is going to say how much probability can take place. And then we're gonna hit shift and the pay, or sorry, we're gonna hit shift and glide. And then we're just going to add some probability per steps. And now we're adding probability to whether or not these um, gates are going to fire. If we have a gate already selected, like this guy, for example, we can do probability over the pulse width of that gate. So that's the same thing. We just hold chant, we just hold shift and glide, and then we turn up that probability. But this is just going to uh, change that gate length on that step make that difference. So that's a cool way to just add a little bit of variation to your gates. We can also add probability to our voltage channels. So for that we just select the channel that we want, go here, adjust the random amount, and this is basically how many semitones you're going to allow your, your step to change. So I'm going to turn this up one, two, three. That's three semitones that it can change. And now I'm going to go through here and say I want my probability, same thing, shift plus glide. And I'm going to add it to this note, and I'm going to turn the probability up quite a bit. And now you'll hear that every once in a while we're getting a different note on that step. So now that we've got all that going, let's add back our Volterra into the Face CV. can move around the phase which is just like start point except for with phase we can actually move around the when we move the end point it's not going to go into the next page it's just going to wrap around for however length how long however long the length of our sequence is set so if i go here and just move shift plus phase start on step three and now that's going to wrap around and in on step two but i've got that face cv in there too so we're just kind of really jumping around now Let's move that back. All right, so let's add some more channels here. I'm gonna take channel three, and I'm gonna run this into the resonance on the filter. And for this one, I'm just going to say, I want channel three. I want it to be unquantized. So we already are un unquantized, that's good. And then let's make the length of this one. So we're gonna hit shift and channel. We're gonna make the length of this one only five steps. So it's a little odd. And then let's add a bunch of different voltages here. Now we're just gonna get spikes of resonance here when these, gate or when these voltages come out. Face scrub to just mess the sequence up for a bit. Take out face EV. Now you can hear that we've got an odd time on that resonance. Let's take channel four and move that to the release on our envelope here. And let's go to channel four, keep it unquantized. We'll just add some voltages here. is I'm just going to take channel 7 and I'm going to run this into a drum input on my assimilator up here which is a shaker. So we'll go to channel 7, we'll turn this one into a gate channel and we'll just add some gates. Just with that gate length you can see we're getting different shaker lengths and we can make a kind of nice sounding, almost natural sounding shaker just with gate length. Let's go back to our gate pattern for the voice and then let's go to fine and let's take some of these let's take some of these swung notes out. Make it just a little bit more straight sounding. fun to 
just be adding more sequences, uh, more channels, and just sequencing different instruments. And then with this phase CV, we can add some movement to it and just kind of see what happens. So again, we'll do that with the Volterra. And we're kind of pushing it on and off of the grid to make a very unique sequence. So as you can tell, it's a awesome experimental sequencer. You can do a lot of really intentional things with it, but you can also get experimental with it and just see what's gonna happen with combining the gate input or the clock input with the phase CV and then moving around the phase scrub, you can get sequences you would have never thought of before. It's not just for dance music, it's not just for four on the floor. I just like to show it in that way so it's very easy to understand what's happening and keep time and just kind of keep our head bobbing while we go. So that is it, that is the Catalyst sequencer. Thank you so much to 4MS for having me do these demos. Thank you to you for watching. The Catalyst Sequencer is available now, so go pick one up and make sure to tag 4MS in anything you put online. And yeah, we'll see y'all next time. Peace.